Hey guys, how is it going? Today it's gonna be a little bit unusual video. I mean, not related to any of our projects that we are working on right now. We're actually gonna work on a Spitfire head that belongs to the same friend of mine that owns this GT6. And he recently bought a Spitfire as well, but it has some issues. So uh, we're gonna have to fix those. For the box, the box is well, I'm gonna show you the box in another video, so I'll show you later. Smells like varnished gasoline. So the story of this car was... Well, I don't have much of the story, but I know that it sat for 10 years it was actually in a pretty good shape, the body and everything. Even when we took out the head, the cylinders look good. The thing is, it's had for 10 years and when the previous owner decided to finally sell it, he tried to start it, but it turned out that two of the valves were seized. Number three and number six were really seized and they were so seized that he actually, as he was cranking the engine, he literally broke the uh, rocker on these two valves. So anyways, he has more than one engine, so everything went to my friend actually. There was another rocker shaft that we installed on the head. Anyway, so that's what we want to do here. We want to take these valves out and eventually we're going to change the guides and we're going to put new valves as well. So we didn't take the engine out, we only took the head off the engine. But as I was taking the manifolds out, I figured that there's two bolts underneath that I don't really have access to these, are to these two bolts. Actually from here now it looks like I have access. So let me see. Well from here I have an access. Okay, but with the engine on it's impossible because now I have an angle here. So what I have to do is I'm gonna have to assemble the manifolds again on the head before we put the head on the block which is really weird so anyways I don't know if I mentioned but that's a 1500 Spitfire I'm not familiar with these I don't know what's different from the engines that I have I have a 1150 I believe is one of my engines the original engine of my Spitfire and then I switched to 1280 I think it's almost 1300 for from my other Spitfire which is still sitting waiting to be restored but I rebuilt the engine and I put it in my Mark 1 Spitfire so that was a long time ago I haven't worked on a Spitfire for a while but anyways my goal is now to take out the manifolds pull out the valves see how we're gonna move this number three and number six actually we were able to move them uh, but number three started going up and down but number six went down and it didn't want to come up so we had to force it up as well and we decided that it's not worth it's better if we literally clean uh, take everything out and change valves and guides now I almost removed this one, but if you notice this one, I haven't touched. That's how it was. So, I'm pretty sure we had a really nice vacuum leak from here. And now I turn this one as well, and now if I, if I remove this bolt, I'm going to be able to remove the... I think I'm going to be able to remove the exhaust manifold, and then I'm going to have better access to that one. There you go. Now I can remove these. See, this was never tight. So I'm pretty sure this engine was running pretty poor. Maybe that's the reason why they parked it. And maybe that's the reason why they wanted to sell it. <laughs> and these I'm gonna soak in evaporast. It's an old evaporast, so. I don't know how well it's gonna work, but then we're gonna try something else after that. 
we're gonna use the tumbler with baking soda like I've never tried that before and I haven't seen anybody trying but I was thinking since they can do soda blasting instead of sandblasting why can't I use soda for my tumbler here we have two dowels Everything looks so tiny compared to the TR6 that I'm working on right now. Pull these valves out. That's number three. So that's one of the seized ones, but this one started going up and down. So it should be good. Yeah. Now you see this one doesn't want to move. This is where it was seized inside the guide. Yeah, you can see I can peel it with my finger. And this is the other pro problematic one. So let's see. This one we're gonna have to pull out on the press, I guess. Okay, I decided to, to clean one of the ports to see how it's going, because if you can see here, the intakes, all of them are like, they have probably an eighth of an inch build up. Well, this one I also started cleaning, but here, has a lot of stuff. It has a lot of stuff that has been built up in the ears. Like I don't even know what that is. But with the wire wheel, it comes out. You see, this one is nice and clean now. So we're gonna clean them all like this. We're gonna clean this surface. We're gonna clean this surface and try to clean this as well all over the place we're gonna push out the guides and clean those parts but it's actually pretty late at night so i'm gonna leave that for tomorrow tomorrow we're gonna pick up from where we left off well things look good as long as we get the parts we're gonna be out of this job pretty soon all right so it's the day after and last night before i left the garage i sprayed everything i soaked everything with uh, this super nine and that's worked well before for me i mean um, it's a very good degreaser so i'm gonna take it outside and i'm gonna rinse it with the hose it would be great if i had a pressure washer which i don't i keep my eyes open for one left on the side of the road <laughs> so i can pick it up and repair it but anyways so i'm just gonna rinse it with the hose and we're gonna brush it and then we're gonna keep take, taking it apart and uh, we're gonna clean it properly with wire wheel and everything and then we're gonna spray it with wd-40 so it doesn't rust
not perfectly clean we're gonna have to wire wheel it and maybe wash it one more time with super 9 we'll see what we're gonna do but for now it's it's good at least it's not super greasy as it was before so now we can start pushing out our um, guides and this valve of course and for this i'm gonna use this tool that i made for uh, tr6 but it turns out it fits perfectly in these as well this used to be a boat with a big head that I had left over from my uh, Jeep when I rebuilt the suspension. So I just turned it a little bit on, uh, on my lathe and it fits perfectly here. So we can push out the guides, but before we push them out, I'm going to try and find the spec for this head because I don't have any manuals or anything for this, uh, for this engine. So just in case I don't find any information, I'm going to measure how high the guides are sticking up oops it will help if i turn it on 18.64 millimeters yeah, 18.6 okay are you gonna remember that guys 18.6 Okay, so let's push out this one first and then we're gonna start pushing out the guides. I put these uh, pieces of 2x4 here so um, I don't scratch the bottom of the head. It's moving. Imagine that was how hard it was seized if it managed to break the rocker. Ah, we're not gonna have enough length. <laughs> Just a little bit more. Okay, we need something shorter. Finally. Wow. That's crazy. This is what's happening in your tank. This is what's happening in your fuel lines everywhere when your car sits for a long time. And the smell. <laughs> We're lucky that they haven't invented the smell transfer through video yet. Let's see if these are gonna move easy. Yeah. Okay. I believe these are the same for intake and exhaust. For, on the TR6 they were different length. But I believe for this engine they are the same. Yeah, they are the same. gasket is pretty well stuck here but I'm cleaning it but it comes out it's nice and clean this combustion chamber is ready I was able to shove this uh, wire wheel um, this wire brush or whatever it is um, inside the intake because the intakes are the ones that are in a worse shape the exhausts are pretty good this one I cleaned yesterday, so I have two more of these intake ports to go and look at this one. This is where the stuck valve was. How was it not going to be stuck? Imagine. Anyways, I'm going to spend some more time cleaning it here. Now I pulled out the hardware from the Evaporast and I'm not really happy with it. Turns out that the Evaporast, even though they say that it can be reused multiple times for me it works only once because once i use it then next time it doesn't work it was used one once before and this is the second time and look as if i didn't do anything 
So anyways, I'm gonna take these apart and I'm gonna put them in the tumbler for an hour or so and we will see what's gonna happen with soda, this time with uh, baking soda. I, I took apart everything, so each component is individual and let's see how we're gonna find them after, I have no idea. Okay, and now I'm gonna keep cleaning here. I'm not gonna hold you because it's annoying, but let's see what can, how easy it is gonna be to clean this crap here. The one that was see that was uh, the valve was seizing it. I think it cleaned up beautifully. So all the intake cleaned up. The exhaust uh, <clears throat> the exhaust ports I didn't touch, but look at this seat here. The valve seat it's been pretty well burned on number two and number three cylinders. Number one, it's not that bad. And number four is not that bad, the, the seat. But anyways, I think they're gonna come around. We're gonna, when we have the new valves, we're gonna lap them and I'm pretty sure they're gonna come around. Um, and that's it here. The ports also on this side cleaned up pretty well. So I sprayed it with WD-40 as you saw, so it doesn't flush rust on me. And as soon as I get the parts, I mean, we need valves and guides, we're gonna put it together, it's ready for that moment, and now let's see what's going on with this thing over there. There you go, now we have all the parts. They could have used a little bit longer tumbling, but that's not too bad either. All right, so it's a day later and we have our valves. So my friend delivered them. These are pretty big. Wow. Hmm. So that's how they sit. As long as they close, we will be fine. Okay, of course we need to put the, the valve guides first. And we have valve guides here. For this head, they are all the same. So intake and exhaust. We have eight, so let's go to the press and push them in. Whatever this is from my angle grinder and this nut together they give me 18.6 millimeters so we're gonna use this as a spacer for how far to push the guides in we're gonna use the same tool to push them in just when we're close we're gonna put our spacers in i forgot to show you here's another one both ends are chamfered so i don't see a direction so I put them in any direction okay we're close now so at this actually I'm gonna put it upside down and this is 18.6 millimeters and then I'm gonna put here also some spacers so let's see if that's gonna work
1957 sounds like a car model 1957 triumph whatever 1960 really 1866 we're in the previous century we are not in the 20th century yet this is so why did didn't it work Ooh. We have a visitor. We have a visitor. <laughs> so here's how people come to visit. They bring their own drinks. I'm cheap. <laughs> they came to inspect, make sure you're doing the head properly. Uh -huh. That's like a half a size of a TR6 head. Yeah. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> she might take enough. But I need to work, so. Got my air conditioning on over here. <laughs> yeah, he has. Air we turned the air conditioning on for him. <laughs> I think I'll watch a movie. Oh, got my diet coke. Yeah. I'm good to go. I need to work. To work. <laughs> so this is what's happening. We didn't press it down all the way, for whatever reason. So we need to press more. Oh, I see why. <laughs> That's not smart of me. Okay. Well, there's no sense then, this washer doesn't help. So let's try this way. But now I'm afraid that this nut is gonna go inside the other nut. So I'm just gonna keep spinning it here. Now it's tight, okay. Let's measure again. That's better. Okay, so we got the trick. Guides are pushed in, they look good. 18.6, 18.7. Good. <clears throat> so our system worked well. So now we're gonna flip it and we're gonna start lapping them. I can't do that with a TR6 head. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna start lapping them and this is the before condition of all the seats the two exhausts in the middle are the worst ones for whatever reason and the other ones are like well this one is pretty pitted too so we have a lot of work to do here i'm gonna start with these because they are the worst and if for whatever reason it doesn't work, I don't want to spend time working on the other ones if these ones are not going to come around. Yeah, I showed that in my video before about the TR6 and I'm going to show it again just in case you haven't watched that video. So before I was using those manual uh, valve loppers, whatever they are called, but when I was too lazy to, to do it manually, I was actually mounting the suction cup on a screw gun or drill and that's how i was doing it but turning it in only one direction actually is not very healthy because sometimes the particles that are in the valve grinding compound are creating channels because they keep turning in the same circle all the time doing it in both ways by hand somehow mixes the compound and shuffles the particles and they go in different directions so for that reason somebody whose name again I forgot I'm sorry commented about this tool and told me that this is available and that's an actually a very interesting tool because you can put it in a drill but this part when you turn this part in only one direction this part turns into both direction it goes it goes left and right it reciprocates you see so that's what we're gonna use now 
not gonna explain too much about the process I'm gonna go straight to lapping the valves I'm just gonna put compound here spray some WD-40 on the stem so first I'm gonna let it spin in the same direction so the compound spreads all over the rim the seat that's it and now we're gonna start going in both directions you see and I'm lifting every once in a while to make sure that the compound goes back because when you're doing it for a while the compound comes out but when you lift it it comes back in trying to hold it in a way that you can see what's going on Pretty well. Nice. You see, there are some lines that are forming still. Well, that's not too bad. Uh, they're pits though. So we're gonna go a little bit more until we get rid of those pits. And this is what the valve looks like. It's not too bad. I'm actually surprised. Okay, that's another minute or two, and that's what's going on. This side is pretty bad. Wow. Well, anyways, we're gonna keep going. Well, some people are enjoying their ride and we have to work, but it is what it is. So anyways, that's what's happening here. Let me zoom in a little. It's not perfect, but it's much better than before. Yeah, there's three, four big pits here that are not gonna disappear yeah so I'm gonna go for a little bit more but obviously I can't make it perfect so we're gonna assemble it this way because uh, my friend wants to drive this car this year and there's still some days of the summer so he wants to enjoy it for a while and then he might take the head apart again and install seats if he wants to or whatever for now and that's how we're gonna put it together for him so he can drive the car all right it's all done like i said it's not the best so don't expect anything fantastic here but it's uh, much better than what it was and it can be driven like this it's not gonna be a disaster so what happened here is uh, I actually had to reuse the intake valves they are not bent I, I checked them made sure that they're worn like after I lapped them they get worn even on all sides which means that they're not bent because if they were bent one side was gonna be worn a little bit more than the other but they look nice and even all of them reason why i reuse them is because one of the new ones i tried to grind and you see the line ends up too far in because they are a little bit bigger 
than the original ones. So I don't know what car these are from, but they are not from this car. So anyways, that's what's happening. They all look much better than what they were. Some of them still have pits, like you see here. They have pits here and there, especially the exhaust ones. But hey, but I'm sure it's gonna build up a nice compression. I'm gonna assemble it now because I promised my friend that we're gonna go and install it tomorrow and tonight I have to finish it. So all these springs and collars and valve keepers or collets if you insist, I put them in the tumbler with the baking soda for like I think it, they spent like two hours there and they cleaned up pretty well. So I'm just gonna assemble everything now. Okay. okay, so I cleaned underneath properly everything. So now I'm gonna put assembly loop here on all the valves and we're gonna start assembling them. together the manifolds here so I don't lose the hardware and just it's easier to carry when everything is in one piece but tomorrow we're gonna have to put the gasket I don't have the gasket my friend has the gaskets this is the valves that we didn't use and the rest of the hardware that I need for here and of course I'm gonna bring breakfast so you're ready for tomorrow well here she is let's see if we can start her today all right, she's all put together. We have even a new oil, a new fuel filter, and we're about to try and start it. gonna go she's misfiring a little bit but it's She leaves, she's going for a test drive now.
Take care.